Hi guys, welcome back to the Dork Van Build. This week's video is all about the wet room build and a huge shout out to Kildwick Compost and Toilets for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna have to sit on that. I'm gonna have to sit on it. Gotta give it a tap. Yeah. Oh, this is what I look like when I go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually quite a nice size. It can go back. I don't know. That is as far back as it goes. But like the door can shut here, which is fine. You wouldn't have your slippers on, would you? There we go. Door open door closed. There's a few last things though we're going to show you about this toilet. First of all, do you want to have a look inside the toilet? There's nothing in there yet so don't worry guys. We've got the separator here. This is a magnet like toilet lid. Do you hear it connect? And then in here, again it's all held by magnets, is the number two bucket and the number one bucket. So I'm going to drop that down. And we've got two fancy little gadgets to show you. So one of them is this, which basically slots underneath the um, urine separator bit because it's magnet. So it's, you can't, you cannot lift that. Like that does not move. You can, as you can see, you can pick the entire toilet up holding it. So you have to pop that in and I guess disconnect the magnets to get in there. So that's that. And this will be glued up here in a minute. The second fancy thing we've got is this spill guard kit. And the way this works is this lid goes on the number one bucket and then we shut this onto it and the urine little funnel bit fits perfectly into it. Honestly this toilet is so well designed everything fit so perfectly together like nothing could go wrong. Anyway the plug you can pop it in here when you're driving so you get no spillages. Although to be honest, in our van, we don't have that and we don't get spillages, but it's there if you wanna be extra fancy. And there are a couple of extra things that come with the kit, like this eco um, sawdust type stuff. This is it. It's a little bit windy today, so popping that back in. Bin bags for the number two bucket, as well as this eco-friendly toilet roll. It says, Shit happens everywhere, roll with it. To find out more about the Kildwick compost and toilets, head to kildwick.com. The link's in our description and pinned comment. Cheers for sponsoring us, Kildwick. As you may have noticed, some of the walls are already cut, but none of them are in situation at the moment. We wanted to get the toilet built first so that we could get it inside and kind of have a visual of whether we have enough length on our legs when we're sitting down on the toilet. And so far, I think it looks quite good. We did have a little bit of apprehension with the length of the wall because it does block off a little bit of the view and obviously reduces some of the space in the kitchen. But having the toilet in there, it's kind of confirmed that we need to have it at this length. The depth of the wet room is 70 centimeters and it's 52 centimeters wide, making it a nice little snug wet room. <sighs> To build this wet room, the first wall we're going to put up is the interior side wall. So basically the wall that butts up against the van itself. No, that's not input to fix this wall into situation, we are using screws. We'll then fill the screw holes in after. Next up is the exterior side wall. This will be fixed into situation by screwing it into the back wall and then once we have the front frame in place we'll fix it into there too. Now we've got all of the side walls in for the wet room it's time to work on the front wall including the arched doorway. This is definitely going to be a very challenging cut as it has to be perfect as we're using both the outer frame that's left behind and the door that's cut in the middle. That looks incredible. You guys have done such a good job on that. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> what? That's not how you come through a door. This is how you present a door. That was my Frankenstein. This looks absolutely awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, stand next to it. So Sam's five foot ten. And it basically is your height. Yeah, yeah. So if you're taller, you might need to do a little bit of ducking. Bit of ducking. Can I have a go? Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> I like this. I feel like I'm entering Narnia or something, but but nothing's changing. Change. Change. <laughs> this is so cool. I love it. We need to sand this down a bit more though. There's a little a little nick here. Sure. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm inside my wet room! <laughs> this is so cool. When we were doing the layout, like, you know, a few months ago, I really didn't think it was gonna feel this spacious. And I know it's weird to say spacious because it's tiny, but we really thought it was gonna be even smaller. This is incredible. I'm in, I am in love. And this arch, love it. What we're gonna do as well is probably put like a lock on the toilet and a handle on the top. It was completely my idea. <laughs> Steve stood there like, you little bitch. Anyway, let's test if we actually fit in while going to the it's a toilet. Live test, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. Sam, if we moved into here, we'd be able to poo in private. <laughs> We've now got the measurements for the base of the wet room so that we can cut a piece of ply that will keep it nice and square. Look. On the floor in the wet room, we are routering out just the edge of the shower waste so that it sits flush against the floor so water can flow a lot better. I've done all the locks and the hinges. Mm, cool. Yeah, go in there and look. What am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so when your partner's annoying you, you can lock them in here and just go and enjoy the wilderness. It is now time to turn this space into a wet room. How? With Raptor. All right, so we've got four bottles of white protective coating. We've got some sachets of beige color to add to our white. And then finally, We've got some trays with some rollers. As you can see, these rollers are not your standard roller. These are quite textured, making them better to use with Raptor because it's very thick and tacky. And you'll see what we mean later on when we get into the painting. Anyway, massive shout out to the Raptor guys for sorting us out with all this gear. To prep the space ready for it to be wrapped, we need to sand it down and vacuum it all. We don't want any dust left behind. In fact, there's loads of preparation to go into Raptor painting. We also need to prep the paint which is a three to one ratio of three Raptor and one hardener. This is all explained on the website and on the box too, and we'll link to their website in the description below. For the design of the bathroom, we're painting it white all over, and then in the bottom third, we'll be covering it with the beige. So in total, there'll be three coats of white paint and one to two coats of beige, depending on how it covers over the white. It's looking so much better with the second coat. It's covering it really nice. Yeah, there's less transparency isn't there mm -hmm. so this is coat one whereas that is coat two God! Wow, man, this paint has come out absolutely amazing. It's very, very textured, but I guess this is kind of the look that we were going for, and we've got to leave it 72 hours before it is fully waterproof. But now it's time to give this some color. We're going for a beige. As you can see, it's already taped off, so we're gonna paint up to here, and I think if it comes anything out like this, 
It's gonna look awesome. We're gonna be happy! Yeah, hell yeah. We decided to two-tone the wet room to add some warmth into the space and so it didn't look so clinical. To do this, we added a beige colour sachet into a three-quarter full white Raptor paint bottle. And now we have a wet room! Woo! It looks absolutely stunning, I think. Yeah. Obviously, we're completely biased. And guys, I think too. if you plan on using Raptor, make sure you ventilate. It's very fumy. Yeah, and um, we have had some good luck today. We've had really good weather, so we've been able to get the majority of the Raptor paint on. But for this last coat of beige, it started to chuck it down, so we've had to close all the doors and windows. So. We're feeling a little high right now. <laughs> Guys, if you do plan to roll it like we did, a little tip is get one roll ahead per coat because you have to give it 60 minutes between each coat and when you come back to it, it is rock solid. So get a few. We've just come out to have a look at the wet room and oh my God, it looks so incredible, doesn't it? Absolutely, because I guys. did it. <laughs> of course, of course. Now it looks really Whatever good. Whatever you touch turns to gold, hey? Now all the paint has dried in the morning, you can see little bits of white coming through this beige, like over here and here. So we're just gonna give it another coat, really get it to soak in and make sure that we get these corners where the joins are in the wood to make sure that they're really waterproof. And as always, I'm gonna be doing the odd jobs around the van. Is it for the Raptor super super easy to apply and such an amazing finish if you like the textured look so I'm really happy with that yeah the color is really nice as well because yeah. obviously we didn't have like proper color samples it's just what we had from the website um, but yeah really happy with it so once cool. it's all dry we'll show it you properly it's time to show you the wet room in a little bit more detail so come on in this is how the color has dried it's kind of like a camel nude. And then down here, we have added our waste trap. Um, we've just used Sikaflex 512 to pop that in. And it's actually a really long waste trap. It's about that long. So it, um, is it protrude the word? So it protrudes past the van. And the way the system is gonna work is it's literally going to go straight out. And we've got a, collapsible bucket this was like five pound from home bargains to go underneath the van to catch the water if you're in an inappropriate area for it to just drain onto the floor and in terms of how to actually shower in there as you can see there is no shower system we are going for a similar setup to what we've got in Terra in the van we live in which is a hose lock so it's basically a seven litre tank and you pump it and then it puts pressure through so you can shower um should we add the toilet in so we have the toilet in. So, so this is it with the toilet in. There are a few things we still wanna add to the wet room, which is having a duck board on the bottom so it doesn't sit directly on the floor. We're gonna be adding a little handle onto the top so it's easier to just pick up. Um, but, but this is it, essentially, minus the decor. Shall I go inside? We've already brought mud in there. <gasps> How could we? Another awesome thing about this door is, although it's not as wide as I had hoped for it to be, it's still gonna work as a divider. So if you place it here, you've got the sink straight opposite the toilet. So if you don't wanna lock yourself in or if it's too small of a space, you can still have that open and still wash your hands without like touching everything. I don't know, if you're like me, I hate to touch things in between. Or you can have it all the way out here when you're showering, the toilet will need to come out as it's wooden, so it'll come out here. You can pop all your stuff around it and you'll have like a full bathroom to yourself. 
and if you're here with a partner or a friend or whatever they can stay over there so you can have some privacy. In terms of hot water letting off steam obviously there is no extractor fan in here or a mushroom vent or anything like that. What we've got is the Fiamma fan right there so we purposely placed that above the kitchen and next to the bathroom knowing that this area was going to be the most the most steamy. <laughs> So by having this door fully wide open while you're showering, and by the way, there's going to be a shower curtain in here as the door's not watertight or the frame's not watertight. So we're going to get like a little DIY curtain rail in here and the shower curtain will go in and then there'll be a gap here. So if there is a little bit of steam making its way out, the extractor fan can pull that out. So we're going to call that a wrap on this week's video. A huge shout out to Kildwick for supporting our content and we'll catch you next week when we do the electrics. Ciao!